Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a my thoughts video on the last two weeks of updates. There was four characters that had a big change. Valentine's Melissa Bella, Vasharaga, Zeta, and my hero. So with this video, I just wanted to give my thoughts on it. People asked about my thoughts and how I feel about the characters. So I thought I'll go through each character individually and just get my thoughts on them. We're going to start off with in order of their updates. So we're going to begin with Valentine's Melissa Bella, which should be in inventory. Let's go here. Da, 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 da. Some, something to get lost. I'm not going to lie. I think it's Axe though. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, so Valentine Melissa Bella, she was a really big help for me. Um, she kind of MVP the GW for me when it came to Nightmare 150. Because I don't have House Senna, it was kind of hard to use Grand John Auto Comp. Um, now you could have did like the uh, Grand Vera, Grand John, Lucio Comp that I think we used with multiple players. But I like to play solo. So because I like to play solo, it wasn't that great. Um, eh. It, it would work. When it works, it works. But sometimes, you know, the boss like, hey, buy a unit. And it pops one of my units. And it's like, oh, that's annoying. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was playing Gunslinger and Melissa Bella and just doing like an, a skill damage variant, which was about three to four minute clear. Uh, not the greatest, you know, not what I'm used to doing. But it worked. I, I mean, three to four minutes is okay. It's not great. It's not the two to three you want to look for. But three to four is, is okay. With no Metatron, by the way, you know, it would have been a little bit faster with Metatron. We ain't, talk, we ain't gonna talk about that, but you know, it was okay. I'll, I'll say it's okay, okay. But yeah, she ended up helping me a ton for Nightmare 150. Also, she, I used her for EX Plus. Not bad, not bad unit. Um, Things that I really liked about her was that, I think her Ogi changed. Now, I don't remember her initial kit, because, to be honest, I didn't use this character until 2020. So, whatever she had in 2019, I don't know. She was not on my radar till 2020, which she got the rebalanced. So, I don't remember what she did before, but I know what she does now. And what she does now is she activates Get Over Here. And its skill is pretty nice, you know. It gives her one stack of chocolate, uh, the spell... Mainly the chocolate part is really nice, but the dispel is really good too. It helped a ton in Nightmare 150. If you if you did Nightmare 150, you know, the R, the, the lower levels, the boss can give itself a uh, veil and uh, defense buff, local. While in Nightmare 150, when you get to 50, it also gains veil, reflect, and a perma defense buff. So... Her ability to activate get over here quite a bit, thanks to Ogiang, helped quite a bit, in my opinion. Love Saber was pretty nice as a way to cap defense down. It allowed me not to bring defense breach, which I normally would have brought, but because she can kind of cap defense down by herself with uh, her stackable defense and light defense, it helped quite a bit, in my opinion. Um, having the extra skill slot on your main character to bring like Dispel, Arrow Rain 3, does help a lot, especially when it comes to debuffing the boss gravity as well. So, I thought it was pretty good. Um, her last skill, decorate, um, decorate, excuse me. This skill, it's okay. I don't think it's that great of a skill. Um, all ally sub is really nice, but you really only want to use it in like normal content when you can guarantee she's going to take massive damage because it does give her one stack of chocolate. And when she gets three stacks, she consumes all three and does 20 hit nuke, which can do anywhere from four to six million with Metatron and Bial. So it's pretty massive amount of damage, six mil. If you can really rank up, ramp up her stacks really fast, six mil is a ton. That's only from her passive, by the way. That's not counting her other passive if she takes hits. Or her actual damage from like autoing and Ogi and her uh, get over here. So six mil, pretty good, pretty good. Um, it also boosts her skill damage. So it did not. I don't think it boosts skill damage cap though, which is like what it should do in my opinion. It should increase her skill damage cap as well, but it boosts skill damage. 
sometimes in a fight you don't I didn't cap my um my get over here so it, it's okay other than that um golden sweetie what's the ability now which is she gains a chocolate with on big damage and when she has three chocolates she activates 20 hits 20 hits is a ton it's pretty funny because she'll still activate it if you kill the boss so like the boss died you see 20 hits like overkill for no reason the boss is already dead so that, that made me laugh um and she heals from it too which is really great uh if you can combine it with skill three she can like heal back all the damage she's taken with skill three so it's a really good combo if you use it properly like on the in nightmare 150 would really good to use it on the 50 also the 25 so that's why that's how i felt about it i think she's pretty good um i don't think they changed skill three i'm off her support skill the other one automatic frolic defense system too i don't think they've seen a change but it's still pretty good though the hard part is the, her getting aggro the one problem with her in nightmare 150 was that it's not a bot that hit a lot it didn't have like high multi-attack rather it had really hard hits um, so this didn't really get that much valuability. Um, if it, if it was a boss that can like triple attack, like quadruple attack, or had AOE autos, I think this would have been a lot better, but it didn't really work like that. So unfortunate, but I think she's pretty good. She worked well for me. Um, that's my opinions on her though. Good character worked well. Let's get on to the next one. Now we're on to the next character, which is Mahira Full Limit Break. Okay, guys, this is going to be a rough one. Don't hate me. Now, to be honest, he didn't change too much. In my opinion, um, there's a couple big things she got, which was her multi-attack rate down. But overall, at the kit, she didn't really change too much. So let's look at her, right? First thing she got, they changed their Ogi. And by change their Ogi, they make it extend skill one, I guess. That's... Hell lackluster, bro. What was they thinking, dude? Bro, extend. Okay, yeah. Extend is cool, right? It's cool. It's seven turns cooldown, five turns uptime. But it could have been something else, man. <laughs> it's like extended so like I would have taken anything else at this point, bro. Yes, I don't have to click her skill every five to seven turns. Okay, cool, bro. But. It could have been anything. A dispel. Come on. It could have been anything else. Man, I don't like it. Maybe somebody likes it. You gotta like. You guys gotta shill it to me, cause personally, I just think it to be extremely lackluster, dude. I would have taken a barrier, dispel, heal, dodge, anything else, but extending the buff. The buff already has a good uptime, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's not clicky, but to be honest, bro, I would have taken clicky at this. Earth is a clicky element. You're going to click the freaking skill for Lobella anyway, so you might as well just accept the fact your element is going to be a clicky one and click the skill because it's the character in the element that incentivizes you clicking. You click 800k. <laughs> so... <laughs> In my opinion, I don't think it's that good of an Ogi. They could have gave her anything else. Extend was the worst option. Because in the element where you want to clicky the button, you don't clicky the button. So it does not, no, I don't like it, okay? Really lackluster. In some scenarios, right, in racing, it's good, right? If you're racing players and you're just mashing the attack button, it's good. But... In that scenario only, is it good? Now, Spirit Drums got an update. It now works. <laughs> Before it didn't work. You had to do. A, you had to get to like drum beats level five and stuff, and it, that was okay. But no one got to drum beats level five because the boss was already dead. So now it, it works like a regular skill. They legit didn't give it anything else. They gave it nothing. They didn't give it a cap, crit, nothing. They gave it nothing. No auto cap, no crit, no seraphic, no adversity. No, they legit gave no buffs. 
to this skill. They just said, hey, it works now. So, I don't know why, but legitimately they gave it nothing. They gave it not a single change. Now, Monkey was a good example of where, like, the skill was already good, right? And what they did with Monkey Buff, they made it work. As in, it no longer gave you lower buff over time. But that's not all Monkey got, okay? She got two extra buffs on her buff. She got critical and something else. I don't remember off the top of my head. She got two buffs, right? Let's go look at Monkey real quick. So Monkey got two extra buffs to her already good buff, right? It was already a good buff, but she got two. Because, you know, fair. She got um, critical hit rate and boosted damage cap, right? Now... Already, it already had five buffs, but was attack, defense, double attack, triple attack, debuff, success rate. Then she gets the crit, and on casting it again, she gets damage cap increase. Mahira got nothing. She got a working skill, and that's it. So I'm a, I'm a little mad, right? I'm a little mad that her skill one legit did not change. Unless I'm missing something, I must be. It didn't get any change. So, that's a little bit underwhelming. A little bit, a little bit, in my opinion. Now, probably the best update is Finding Flight, which got a increase to the, I think, the defense down on Earth, which is 25 now. It's the hit to the fence is 15, meaning that she can do 40 defense down by herself. But the big buff multi-attack rate down this is one of the debuffs that earth did not have off the top of my head so having multi-attack rate down helps a ton helps in any hard fight where you can apply it um fa mainly where like lowering multi-attack is pretty great um i like this one a ton not to mention that it's a rare debuff in general so her having multi-attack rate down is pretty great Good skill. I like it. Feathered in the nest. No change. Didn't get anything. Nothing. It was already a decent skill, but it could have got it like a large attack. A sign. It got nothing. <sighs> but what that's gain into fourth skill. On the shoulders of giants. Now, this skill, it's actually a really good skill. It gets her five turns of dodge rate up, five turns of damage, um, and in the optimal situation, it can create a blue pot. The problem is that you ain't getting that blue pot. Unless you're lucky, and the boss is like, oh, I'm not debuffing you, you ain't seeing that blue pot. That's how it's going to go. You're probably like, why? If you don't have the character. Understandable. You don't have the character. They made another change there, and that change is just like flying. Supplemental damage to all allies based on the number of drum beats. That's very good, very very good skill. When at max, debuff immunity one time consumes all drum beats. Now you're probably like, ah, uh, that's cool. You got veil one time. You don't get to pick when you get debuffed. So you need to first build up your stacks of drum beats to max. Pray you don't get debuffed on on the boss that has like one to two charge diamonds and he loves Ibilis. And if you didn't clear that trial 10, you get debuffed each turn. Yeah, and it, by the way, all your units needs to uh, have max drum beats. So to keep that in mind, you need four units. If one of your units lags behind, you get cucked. It's <laughs> just one of them. <laughs> oh, you didn't triple attack? Unfortunate. <laughs> so, you know, in the optimal scenario, it's great. Blue pot, that's like on a heal 40 percent pretty good <laughs> are you gonna get a lot though <laughs> no 
no, 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 no. Um, when it works, it works. It's freaking great. I love it. But it don't work a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't be expecting to get that blue pot too often. I can't imagine um, how often you get it in solo fox. With where you would need it the most is solo because um you're gonna have a hard time with that <laughs> uh you probably get it during overdrive after the 50 because he starts firing off axion when he starts firing off axion it's a lot more consistent um uh, when he did iblis you ain't getting it so that's like the first 50 percent of the fight but after the 50% of the fight, you probably get it more often in solo. And um, group, which most people are going to be doing, um, you'll get it like after Iblis, which is up to the 50% on the wink. So once you get the 50% on the wink and you kill the wink, because the wink can actually debuff you, you didn't know. The wink can debuff you, so it's going to be kind of hard. It's not easy. This character... She ain't no monkey, dude. <laughs> I have no other words than to describe that she ain't no monkey, dude. That's how I feel about her. She's not bad. Hell no, she's not bad. She's good. But she ain't monkey, dude. <laughs> so that's how I feel about her. She got some good stuff. But man, it's just this passive. I hate it, dude. I hate the passive, man. <laughs> If it wasn't for a skill 2 though, I don't know how I feel about this character. This skill 2 is like the one thing that's like, yo, it's so good. I love the skill 2, dude. But the rest, her skill 1 didn't get no like massive buff, you know. To be honest, I would have taken her supplemental damage and put it on her, her skill 1. That Because keep in mind, right? Another thing you gotta mention is that when you consume your drum beats, you lose that buff. So I felt like they should just remove this, put it on scale one, and I'm a little bit more happy because you don't have to worry about losing damage when you either activate skill four in the optimal situation or if the boss wants, the boss wants to cuck you and debuff you. So that's how I feel about it. Tell me how you guys feel about it. I know some people are like, oh, she's 10 out of 10. No, she's not no 10 out of 10 character, dude. But she's a good character, though. But she's not, she not perfect. This veil gotta go. Either they gotta change how it works, because I'm annoyed. It annoys me. I don't like being cucked. And, and, my, and my own rooster is cucking me. So, that's, <laughs> I ranted it long enough. Let's get on to the next characters. Next, we on to the big boy, Vasharaga. <sighs> he got a rebalance. It kind of broke the game for a day. Uh, his undying and doctor was legitimately broken. So it was so broken that they actually had to patch the game and change the, I think the, the doctor scale that lowered your maximum health bar no longer can lower it to one. It can only lower it to like 20% of your maximum health now. That's how broken he was on release. Still pretty strong character overall though. So not bad. Um. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I need to do the cute meme and solo Akasha with Vasharaga. So, unfortunate. I was too late. But, what he has now, Carnage Moon gets a new buff now. It gives a two-turn skill spec boost, which is nice. Um, I would have liked it to be three turns. I feel like two turns is just a one turn too short for him to really maximize it. But two turns is okay. Gray Scythe now gives 20% boost to charge bar, which does help with keeping good uptime on his Ogi buff. But I would have liked his Ogi buff to be a little bit longer. Instinction, which is not bad, jammed ability. I think it's about as strong as Bea's in dark, if not stronger. So not bad. And if he has the Ogi buff on, and he's targeted, he will activate Instinction, which is great because he gets to keep better uptime on Jammed, which is pretty much going to be perma for him, in which you can see him hit really high numbers. So it's really not that bad at all. 
up to like four million by the way on on encounter when he counters he he, he counters you <laughs> you get punished for hitting him so i like it i like it a lot uh i just wish the uptime of his carnage moon was longer and for his third skill forgotten tales gives him too many buffs i think he gets attack defense hostility damage cap and his one foe attacks turn to all foes now that's okay i i don't think that's perfect though i think in some scenarios it's going to be kind of annoying i think because you know, his all foes can kind of cuck people in fa because if you're trying to attack the wing right you can also be attacking the main body and by mistake puts the 95 on somebody so it, it's good but i also think in very rare scenarios, it could be a problem for a couple of people. In case you wanted to bring him to Fa high level, but I think he's really good for it. I haven't did a video on it yet, but uh, I think he's pretty good. He also gets a boosted defense based on how low his health is. I don't think this has seen any change, but uh, what did see a change though is feel no pain. He felt no pain for that, what, like five hours before they. Uh, Patch the game. He has Undying, which is the same skill of Ganshaborger, where he legit can't die, nothing can kill him, plane damage. I think John has the same skill too, Dark John, with nothing can kill him, nothing in the game. He also gains debuff of immunity, and buffs cannot be removed, so he has to can't be dispelled. But this is when he's at high health. So I don't know how optimal it is to play with him at high health. Because you're gonna want to lower his health anyway with skill three, right? So I I'm not too sure where I want to keep him. Cause you want him to be in green so he gets all these cool stuff, right? But you want him to be in red because he has jammed and his crazy buffs from his skill three is gonna lower his health by 25. So it's a really weird kit. It's abusable though, thanks to his new passive, feel no pain. But I just don't know where's the best place to keep him in terms of health. I feel like anywhere you keep him, though, it's going to be good, right? Anywhere you keep him, it's going to be good. If he's in green, he can't die. If he's in red, he hits like a truck. So, no matter where you keep him, it'll be good. But I just don't know where to optimally keep him currently. But that's my thoughts on him. And uh, let's get on to the next one and the final one. And we're on to the final character and probably my favorite out of the upgraded characters for this month, Zeta. Zeta's pretty good. Um, she helps a ton in Fa, and that's mainly where I'm using her currently. Let's talk about her. Her Ogi gets a boosted CA specs against any foe with her unique debuff, which is okay. I don't think it's like broken or anything. Um, I would prefer her critical buff being AoE now to all allies, but... This is okay, not that bad. Her skill one still applies her local debuff for four turns, but now gives her a guaranteed triple attack for the turn, which is really, really good. When you combine with her, her skill two assassin, it's a very good combination. Her skill two had seen a massive change thanks to her passive. Um, her passive now consumes no nuke C applies, which is any of these three, would consume her assassin skill, which is great. And not only that, while her assassin skill is up, her skill two, she can activate any of her nukes twice per turn, which is really good. However, if you do not use that nuke twice in the turn, it will not it will still be on cooldown. So let's say, for example, you activate skill two, you activate skill one, you auto, skill one will be on cooldown. It will not be up again. So just keep that in mind that if you're gonna use her skill two, you should just hit all her skills because they're gonna go on cooldown right after. Her skill three gets a dispel, which is nice. Um, I think it's okay. I think it's really good in Fa though, because before Fire had a problem with the spell, unless you had a certain invoker. 
So now Fire having more access to a pretty good Dispeller. Rackham was good, but this is like even better. Rackham has a five turn cooldown for one Dispel. This character has up to uh, six turn for two. So way better in my opinion. And it's AoE, so even better than. And her final skill, she gains a fourth skill, which gives a plain damage to nuke and a delay, which is really big, and can be casted twice. So she gets two plain damage nukes that can cap up to one mil each, allow her to clear labor seven. Yeah, I don't know why it's one mil only. Um, they're kind of just making units directly to counter Fa, which I feel to be kind of weird because you know, whenever they power creep this raid with the new big raid, <laughs> This is not going to be nearly as effect effective, right? I feel like it's going to be like, do 4 million plane damage in one turn. So, it's good now, which is the current hardest rate in the game, which is Fa. So, and it applies a delay. Delay, who doesn't like a delay, right? Unless the delay cuts you and you get into Paradise Lost, right? So, to keep that in mind, when you're applying the plane damage, to pay attention, to not line up the diamonds, to put yourself in Paradise Lost. However, Fire can deal with it, but uh, you don't want to run into it most of the time. This sometimes you do, but most of the time you don't want to. Just something to keep in mind when using her skill three. But other than that, she works really good for Fa. That's main use. For, my main use for her is for Fa now. Um, combining her with Athena makes it a lot easier for me to do Fa Roulette, so I can use like random units. So I like it. I like her. Oh, and, oh, another thing she gains is that she gains a damage cap on critical hits. So, damage cap on critical hits, not bad. Um, and bonus fire damage on triple attacks. So, pretty much any time you have her skill two up, you can pretty much get guaranteed bonus damage with her skill one and her assassin. So, I like it. I like it. Not bad. But that's about it. That's my opinion on all the units that have been upgraded. I'm a little bit late on it. Um, in the future, I won't be doing this nearly as late. Just that Guild Wars kind of screwed me over. To be honest, it probably happened again in February because Guild Wars is so close and that's a lot of things I gotta get done. So, unfortunately, um, something I gotta worry about, but hey, hopefully in the future, I can not get these videos out nearly as late, but those are my opinions. Thank you guys for watching. Tell me yours in the description. I know some people may be mad about my opinion on my hero, but that's how I feel about it. So, oh well. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. Next time. Bye.